class is entitled One of the Greatest Holidays Ever by the Honorable Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Pentecost is the second of the three great annual festivals, the other two being Passover and Tabernacles. These three great annual festivals belong exclusively to the so-called black man and woman of America, and all three of them are laws from the God of the Bible designed to make you rich, prosperous, successful, independent, self-sufficient forever. And you do it every year so you won't forget. It just reminds you to keep doing these laws so you can continue in this way. Now you have to be willing to work for Yahweh. What does that mean? I have to quit my job? No. That's, that's your enemy told you that. It's your enemy told you that. My thing is you better have a job. <laughs> Quit some job. You have to be out of your mind. Or you, you, don't you come parking your feet up in here talking about, I just quit my job to work for Yahweh. You better go get out of this school house you in. You better go to the real world, honey. Get on back out there where you work because you sure don't know nothing about Yahweh. Because I quit my job to work for Yahweh. And you don't even know Yahweh. You better get out of my face. Somebody lied to you, honey. No, to enjoy heaven from Yahweh, you have to work for Yahweh. Does that mean I have to sell my house? You got to be crazy. Where are you going to sleep? What are you getting ready to do? Join the homeless? <laughs> or one of these bitches around? Or what, what? Hey, I don't even want nobody around that don't have a concept of a home. You know, a person without a concept of a home is a, is a, is a pitiful person, and a pitiful person can't go to heaven. Can't enter heaven. Heaven is not designed for homeless folk. Don't even bring me a homeless person. You take those homeless people to people who want to keep them programmed with that kind of mindset. What are you saying, Yahweh? Are you saying that Yahweh doesn't have any mercy on the poor? You show me in the Bible where blessed is the poor. Bible doesn't say that. Talk about blessed is the poor and the meek. They shall inherit heaven. You a lie. Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says, blessed is the poor in spirit. See, that, that, that leaves you in a, in a bad shape right away because you don't know what spirit is. You don't know what spirit he has and what spirit he's supposed to have. But I know one thing, if he don't change from that poor spirit and adopt a rich spirit, he won't be going to heaven, I know that. See, the law of the Feast of Weeks teach you that you have to work. Huh? Yeah. So it seeds. See, see, the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that went out and sold seeds. See, heaven is like a man that go out and go to work with something in his hand that's created by God.
a seed may look in earth. It may look simply organic or inorganic, whatever way it looks to you. It may look like an inanimate object to you. Huh? But there's something peculiar about the seed that's created by God. It may look like nothing, but see, it has life in it. It has a lifetime in it. Hallelujah. See, there's a reality you have to face. See, only life, the only way you can have life is from life. Life comes from life. And there's only one life giver. And that's Yahweh. See, he got life in a seed. Huh? And if you want to go to heaven, you're going to have to sow some heavenly seeds created by Yahweh. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Now, you may be poor in spirit. Which is why you may be poor materially. But you can't be materially poor and go to heaven. Heaven is not designed for the impoverished or the destitute. It's not. Heaven is not designed for the homeless. What would the homeless do in heaven? <laughs> Have you ever seen how the homeless live? In my father's house are many mansions. Now what am I going to do with a homeless fellow living in one of my mansions? All of you know how the, if you put a bunch of homeless folk in a mansion, you know how it's going to look. You have experience every day. Most of you are afraid to live in a neighborhood where all the homeless hang out. They call them ghettos too, you know. Nobody with good sense really wants to live in a ghetto. I, you say, well, what you doing in the ghetto, Yahweh Ben Yahweh? I have sense enough how to turn the ghetto into a good place. Uh-huh. I reform the ghetto. I rebuild the ghetto. What I do with the buildings is a sign of what I do with the mind, see? Feast, the law of the Feast of Weeks teach you all of this. Now, the most important Bible passages relating to Feast of Weeks, you can find in Exodus chapter 23. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 23. I said I was going to get to some kind of scriptures tonight. Here I go. I know it didn't seem like, and I'm still going to try to not teach so long. But I don't know what you came here for. Maybe you came to hear pianos and organs, and we're going to hear something tonight. But I'm playing a symphony orchestra right now. A symphonic orchestra. And I'm, I'm the writer. I scored the piece. Huh? All right, I'm the arranger. Mm -hmm. I'm the producer. And I, I, I'm the composer. You know, I, I set up all the Apachios and Staccatos. And, huh? Yeah, yeah. And then I select my players. I created the instruments to this. Huh? Yeah. Then I sit up and I'm the music teacher. Yeah, I, I give you a natural talent. My, I gave it to you. That's, that's, that's my father's gift. You know you didn't give yourself the gift. You're born with that. That, that comes from someone greater than you. And then I'm the conductor. I'm the virtuoso. I'm, I'm satisfied with, with, with my orchestra. Exodus 23, verse 16. Read. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, 
and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Okay. There's a word in there that the so-called black man of America finds an anathema to him. What is it? Labor. But to have heaven, you got to labor for it. And you got to go gather it. Labor is also another way for word for work. Hmm? See, in verse 15, the last word said, and none shall appear before me empty. I mean, broke. <laughs> See, verse 15, the last sentence, following that colon, in the, in the parentheses, then you see, and none shall appear before me empty. Now how much money does a homeless man have? What does a welfare mentality have to give? What does an excuse maker have to give? Only an excuse. All they have to give is an excuse. But this is talking about industrious people, see? Anybody that labor is the first fruit that belongs to you. It's the first fruit of your labor. Which you have what? Soul. I told you you got to be a sower. I'm going to put a line under my soul. <laughs> this is, helps to explain one of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, what it's like. The kingdom of heaven is like a man without his soul. Huh? <laughs> Feast of weeks require you to sow. In a field. And you don't just sow once, it says here. You should be sowing at least twice a year. And you got to go to work and labor some. And this will produce heaven for you. So a people who do not want to labor, huh? can enjoy heaven. Now notice this too. It says here, and the feast of harvest, first fruit of our labor, which thou hast sown in the field. Field is land. Farms. Huh? And you live in a ghetto. You don't own a field that somebody else can't take from you and tax you off of it. Uh, you don't own it when somebody can tax you off of it. What? Only the owner has the right to levy tax. And when you own something, you won't tax yourself off of it. Huh? You just tax yourself right on out of heaven. <laughs> You're stupid enough to tax yourself on your own land, you are stupid. The people that have the power to tax you don't ever have to work. They can just live from taxing you. <laughs> they have the real power to make your life miserable. So this scripture right here is teaching us you need your own land. And to keep you from knowing this, your enemies tricked you off of what land you had. You used to own several million acres. 
Now you only own 300,000 acres. You own at least 10 million acres after slavery here in America. In the last 40 years, you own 10 million acres. And now you have only 300,000 left. And those that own that don't want to be there. They want to come to the dope ghetto. Now this is not so much a physical thing and a carnal thing or a terrestrial thing as it is a spiritual thing. See, the knowledge in this verse is really spiritual. Don't think I'm saying that what you need to do is go buy a field. You own, I just told you tonight, you already own the richest land on the planet and don't know it. See, the God of the Bible gave you some land through your father Abraham forever. And some people are living on your land, squatting, know it's yours, and won't tell you. I'm here telling you, and you still don't know it. Because owning a field has never seemed important to you. Buying a house from your enemy who has the power to tax you out of it every year is the way you think you should go. But if you own the field, the land, then you can build your house on it and nobody can tax you off of it. Because you put your house on something you already own. And you don't have to buy any money when you own the land. You say, well, it takes wood to buy. You don't have to buy any lumber. Grow you some trees. <laughs> well, you have to wait on the trees to grow up. Well, patience is a virtue. <laughs> Blessed are they that wait on the Lord Yahweh. How many are beginning to understand that the law of Feast of Weeks in this scripture is teaching us the elements that is required to be rich? Can you see it? Yes, but see, this is a spiritual message. The field that you need right now is your head. And the seed that you need to take hold to is every word that proceeds out of my mouth. That's the life journey. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded and cometh forth out of the mouth of God, Yahweh. And when you learn how to spiritualize this scripture, then you can translate that into physical wealth. That's what I'm doing. I mean, it's easy to do. I'm showing you it can be done. I'm not rich from the apartment building. I'm rich. That's why we have the apartment building. I'm rich first. <laughs> Anybody understanding what I'm saying? A musician doesn't get rich from playing. He was rich when he received his talent. Then he had to labor. If you want to get rich, you got to labor. Labor means he labored with his instrument while you out playing. Huh? He's in a room somewhere practicing to master his instrument. And it requires discipline, self-discipline. And before somebody can scream how good he is, he had to pay his dues. Huh? He paid some serious dues, brother. The better he is, the more dues he pays. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Don't tell me, tell me I don't know. I know what I'm talking about. He laid up in the field of music. Now, the way 
way he gets riches when he go out and sow those seeds from that labor, huh? Yeah. And then the people say, that's good. See, when Yahweh made the tree and then he made the seed and go with the tree, Yahweh already says what? That's good. He already pronounced it as good. It's good from God. It's already good. <laughs> but you have to work at it. Oh, yes, you do. You gotta labor at it. You practice till you get faster and faster and faster. You don't get fast because you thought about it. Man, you practice to get fast. You don't just sit up and invert no scale. Nah, man, no nigga set up and just invert no scale. You learn, you study that. You learn what your instrument can do and you hit that. So study and practice and learn it. And then the people say, that's good. Praise our And the better you are, the more the people are willing to pay to hear you as a result of your labor. See, your real labor is when you practice. Now, the people may not know how you got good, see, but you know how you got good. 